Welcome back Facebook and YouTube. Today I want to talk to y'all about an individual that I spoke about in the past on this channel. But at the time I was at a different level of knowledge than I am today. So I want to go back and retouch on this individual because he played a very important role in the conscious community. Now this is a gentleman by the name of Phil Schneider. Many of you may not be aware of who Phil Schneider is, but he claimed to be a secret government agent who worked on a project called Project Doms. But I don't want to get into exactly who he is right now. I'm going to be very thorough. I'm going to go into Phil Schneider's life and I'm going to go into who he claimed to be. And I'm going to also go into something very interesting that many of us, like myself, have never questioned. You see, often we've given one side of a story and we're left to either believe that story or not believe that story. And when we're in the realm of belief, we are not in the realm of knowing, the realm of fact. So we're still in the realm of pseudoscience. You see, earlier in my evolution, I would look at Phil Schneider videos and my mind would be blown away. Blown away in a type of way where I wasn't really gaining new information. When I listened to Phil Schneider, what he really did to me was reconfirm information that I speculated or had beliefs in, such as UFOs and different pseudoscience type of beliefs like aliens and Nibiru during that time that was the level of knowledge I was at and people like Phil Schneider just reinforced those beliefs when I listened to him at the time I never heard another side of the Phil Schneider story I only heard Phil Schneider's story from Phil Schneider's mouth but I've learned to become a better investigator and not to be biased and I've learned to consider a different side which leads to something I want you guys to know before I get deep into this video. What led me to even make this video? You see, lately, there have been a lot of UFO alien talk in the conscious community. There's even been debates. Many of you tuned into the recent debate with Brother Polite and the other young brother concerning UFOs and extraterrestrials. This is not nothing new. These debates have gone on for so long. And the reason UFOs are not a fact is because everyone hasn't seen a UFO. The reason we have the belief of UFOs, but not the fact of UFOs is because most of us believe in UFOs based on the observations of a few people who said they seen UFOs and we have to take those people words. We have to believe in them no different than the biblical observations of Matthew, Peter and different writers in the Bible who said they saw Jesus walk on water and we had to either take their word or not believe in it or not. The same thing with the UFOs. What we really need to do and what I challenge you to do is start to actually investigate and research the people who are making these observations. When you do that, you will end up down a rabbit hole. Now, why don't many of us do that? Because most of us just want to accept the belief in aliens. It's a cool belief. It's interesting. It's entertaining. Most of us already have many stories and pseudoscience type videos on our channels already that's talking about little green men and we can't debunk ourselves because why? Most of us don't have that type of integrity, unfortunately. Now, how did I end up making this video? Based on all the recent UFO debates and alien talk, one thing popped in my head while in the backyard having a conversation with my woman. We were talking about UFOs with the children. We were looking up at the sky and my woman looked over to me and she said, baby, what about Phil Schneider? And both of us start to reminisce on the stories of Phil Snyder. And the more we talked about it, the more we begin to laugh and come to the conclusion that, wow, these are whew, some real bizarre stories. I want everyone under the sound of my voice who are aware of the stories of Phil Snyder to 
think about them and really think about them. It's the kind of sci-fi pseudoscience that you only get in the movies. Now, at one point, I believe Phil Schneider. Today, I have to admit on video, I do not believe the stories of Phil Schneider and I do not believe in UFOs. Now, let's get into this video on Phil Schneider so I can show you all why I come to that conclusion. But for many of you who are not aware on who Phil Schneider is, let me give you a brief rundown on who he is or who he claimed to be. And let me give you his side of the story that many of you are aware of and the non-popular story, which is the opposing side of the story that come from his family members and others. We have evidence to support that side. And you guys can make your own conclusion. I'm just giving you mine. So let's get right into it. Among the most controversial figures in the field of UFOlogy is Phil Schneider. He claimed to be a government geologist slash structural engineer. Phil appeared on a lecture circuit in May of 1995 and his talking points included UFOs, aliens, one world government, the new world order, black budgets, deep underground military bases or DOMs, and stealth technology. Seven months later, he was found dead in his Portland apartment on January 17, 1996 after an apparent quote-unquote suicide. The circumstances surrounding his death remain highly suspicious and the incompetent efforts by both police and medical examiners cry out for justice. Now, before I get deep into this, let me just mention on my behalf as Brother Sanchez for the record that I don't know if his death was a suicide. I don't know if it was a government assassination. Now, maybe toward the end of this video, I can give my answer on that or even let you know which one I'm leaning toward. But I want to be unbiased on this. You're going to see why I say that as we get deep into this. This Phil Schneider story go deeper than most of us know. That's the only reason why I'm doing this video in 2017. Did Phil Schneider really take his own life? Was foul play involved? Did the powers that be silence Phil out of fear that he was revealing too many skeletons in the government defense contractor closet? Now, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to just plug in an alternative viewpoint that I want you guys to really consider. Whether the government killed Phil Schneider or not, which they, it's a good chance they did, and it's a good chance they didn't. Whether they did or didn't, the messages in the work of Phil Schneider benefited the elite, not the people. The messages and the teachings of Phil Schneider ultimately benefit the elite and not the people. You got to understand how chess is played. Yes, Phil Schneider shed light on a lot of things. And yes, many say he was one of the greatest whistleblowers and patriots of all time. But when we get deep into this rabbit hole in this video, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Rest in peace, Phil Schneider, if, if Phil is really dead, because who knows, you know, he can be on a, another continent somewhere. There are many continents we don't even know about, but that's another story. You see, in order for them to see different ideologies into the country's communities, they have to shroud those ideologies in mystery. And the way they plant them is to give you a whistleblower. See, they know us, quote unquote, conspiracy theorists. They know that we love a good whistleblower. So they plant whistleblowers out there and they see misinformation through those whistleblowers and they legitimize that message by giving you a lot of truth that whistleblower come out and expose you to a lot of deception and, and stuff about the government you didn't know they give you a lot of truth like alex jones and david ike but at the end of that truth they lead you in a dead end of pseudoscience where it's about aliens or something you can't prove or believe so David Icke take you back to some hollow moon alien crap. Alex Jones take you back to some alien Nibiru crap. Just like Phil Schneider. One thing about Phil Schneider that's going to blow you all away is when we get into who he really was. But first, let's continue the rundown. 
Plans for a quote unquote tell all book revealing the horrible truth never materialized and essentially all of Phillips evidence, which consisted of lecture material, quote unquote alien medals, higher math books, photos and an original manuscript were stolen after his death. If the incredible claims made by Phil Schneider eventually turn out to be accurate, this quote-unquote devoted patriot should be honored for his dedicated service to mankind. Now, people don't get emotional, okay? All of you Phil Schneider fans, you're talking to someone who has so much respect from Phil Schneider and learned from him. I've been making videos about a lot of Phil's lately, <laughs> but staying on subject... I'm just exposing us to another side of this whole story that we weren't exposed to. I'm not saying to take anyone's belief, you draw your own conclusion, okay, people? Don't get emotional, all right? Just like we read, if all of this stuff is true, this devoted patriot should be honored for his dedicated service to mankind. I would never take that away if this is true, but that only stands if this is true. What exactly happened with Philip Schneider and what made him famous? What was his story? See, Philip Schneider's life was certainly as controversial as his death. He was born on April 23rd, 1947 at Bethsaida Navy Hospital. Philip's parents were Oscar and Sally Schneider. His father, Oscar Otto Schneider, was a captain in the U.S. Navy. He eventually met his wife, Cynthia Dreyer, in 1986 and was married in Carson City, Nevada. Regarding his career and background, Phil claimed that he was employed by the Lockheed Skunk Works in Burbank, California, and that he worked on the SR-71. He also stated that he worked as a government geologist specifically for NATO, and that he had 17 years of experience involved with black projects. He had a level 3 Ryo Light 38 security clearance, he claimed. Having such a high level of clearance, Phil was authorized to report directly to one of three individuals, the President of the United States, Director of the CIA, and the Associated Base Commander where he was employed. This was his claim. Between 1977 and 1981, he worked for Morris Nuts and DOD construction contractor. Concurrently, between 1978 and 1981, Field claimed he worked directly for the Department of the Navy Office of Naval Intelligence. He spent months at Area 51 and was known as an interpreter for a quote-unquote guest of the government, which turned out to be a reptilian alien. Phil's work on deep underground military bases or DOMs took him to Russia, Vietnam, New Guinea, and Saudi Arabia. His work involved the boring of deep shafts from one to three miles into the earth and to analyze the rock structure for the purpose of building underground facilities. He had become an expert in his field. These cavernous spaces were created by exploding shaped charges and porous rock which would essentially blow the room into existence. He had also done some photographic work for the military. These were all his claims. So one thing I want to point out is that everything I just read were things Phil Schneider said at his lectures and these were his claims on who he is. Now, this is just one side of the story because his family got other sides of the story that many of us aren't aware of. And we're going to put this his claims to the test because many of us got to admit we didn't get the other side of it. We were biased. So this video is an honest video. We re-exploring this. So let's move on and continue to run down. A lot of times when we're dealing with these people like Phil Schneider, who were quote unquote whistleblowers, we don't investigate these people. They pop up, we hear their story, and at the end of it, we're left to believe them or not believe them. If the story is compelling enough, most of us will believe them, especially Phil Schneider, who was very compelling, and not only that, he had injuries to prove his stories, and also he showed up with a piece of metal, and this metal, he said, actually come from the aliens. So there's a lot of debunking to do when we talk about Phil Snyder, if you want to really debunk him, but it's not as hard as you think. Let me point something out before we move further about the things I just mentioned. 
his injuries on his hand, according to his family, do not come from an alien attack that he told us about. We'll get into what actually happened in a minute. Concerning the medal that he always showed at the lectures, no one was never allowed to touch it. I don't know how true that is, but if that's true, that's kind of questionable. Also, there were said to not be any demonstrations other than him just showing you a piece of metal and telling you where it is. And again, you either believe in it or not. At the time, my level of investigation wasn't as sincere as it was now. I wanted to kind of believe him. So I admit that and in this video, we're going to be real honest investigators and we're going to be Sherlock Holmes and put Phil Snyder's claims to the test. Now, with that in mind, we're going to move on and we're going to get a little bit more of this rundown before we get deep into the rabbit hole. Now, a lot of Phil's claims that he made, he supported them and reinforced them by using his father, which he claimed was actually throughout his lecture tours across America. Phil stated that his father, Oscar, was involved with both the Philadelphia Experiment and Operations Crossroads. Both of these things I just mentioned are so shrouded in conspiracy, just like the moon missions. So it's funny that Phil come along and reinforce these things and it's going to get real deep when I show you why. You got to keep in mind everything Phil Snyder reinforced into the conscious community is the same thing Hollywood go to great extents to reinforce like aliens. They even made a movie called A Philadelphia Experiment. Now what makes Phil's claims questionable is the fact that he stated that his father Oscar was involved with the Philadelphia Experiment and Operations Crossroad, but truth is that his father Oscar was just a captain in the Navy and served as a medical doctor, okay? And that can be proven. We will be getting into that deeper in this video. I just got to state that for the record. His father was actually a medical doctor. Now, where did Phil get this lie from, this idea that his father was involved with the Philadelphia Experiment? That leads to another individual that most of us wasn't aware of. Now, let me go ahead and introduce him before we continue this rundown. It's going to be necessary. So real quick, the guy we want to point out is a guy by the name of Al Bialik. He is a proven shield liar and conspiracy theory pseudoscience government agent no different than Ike and Alex Jones and the rest of them Nancy leader and the rest of them these government shields and people with these mental illnesses that the government used to see they pick the right people to make famous they pick some people who speak in the language to reinforce certain things they need to reinforce. Some of these people being used don't know they being used and then they end up vanishing. But like I said, who is Bialek? Bialek is sort of like Phil Schneider's mentor. See, he'd been around for a while. He actually schooled Phil on a Philadelphia experiment. When you go and look up Al Bialek, you will see that he became famous on the scene based on his association with the Philadelphia Experiment. But a lot of people said that he was a doggone liar. And why they said that, because when you think of his claims, they just as foolish as Phil Schneider's claims. Now, Phil Schneider claimed he lost his fingers by a gray alien who shot an electrical discharge out of his stomach. Now, y'all, that's in the realm of sci-fi and pseudoscience. But like I said, we'll get into that deeper in the video. But let's stay on Al Bialek here and how he played a role in Phil Schneider's evolution. He's been a liar. These are people who attach themselves to big conspiracies while they popular and they associate themselves with it and try to come out like they firsthand testimony witnesses on these type pseudoscience theoretical things that we see in Hollywood and they end up convincing a lot of people to believe them and they get followings 
and they end up capitalizing on a lot of books and all of that stuff, even movie deals. Anyway, Al Bialek was one of them. So he supposedly passed away in October 2011, but he the one schooled Phil Snyder on a lot of the interesting concepts Phil taught at his lectures. And we'll get into that later. But Bialek gained a degree of public recognition for the first time with his well-known testimony at the MUFON conference in 1990. At that time, he stated that he was a true eyewitness and participant to the Philadelphia experiment. The facts published here would clearly demonstrate that Bialek, as well as his companions Preston Nichols and Duncan Cameron, willfully crafted one of the biggest hoaxes to spread from the Internet. According to his own records, Bialek has been on over 50 radio talk shows and a featured speaker at over 40 conferences. We will outline in the body of our presentation the following re-evaluation of Al Bialek. First of all, he never participated in the Philadelphia experiment. He never witnessed the Philadelphia experiment. He was nowhere near the Philadelphia experiment test when it occurred. He has changed the nature of his story many times over the years with additions, embellishments, deletions, and wholesale fabrication of events. He has stated historical events that can be completely verified to be totally false. Also, Bialek claimed that when he saw the movie Philadelphia Experiment, that's when he remembered he was a part of it. Let me repeat that one more time and then I'm going to pause so you can sink it in your doggone mind. This man claimed that he didn't even know he was part of the Philadelphia Experiment till they came out with the movie. And then when he went home that night and was thinking about the movie, it all came back to him that he was actually part of it. He convinced so many people to believe that bogus story. People get real. Do you really believe that? Think about that. So in a nutshell, we talking about people who showed up on a country scene and really deceived the people. They said a bigger the lie, the more we'll believe it. And buddy, man, when I go back and look at Phil Schneider's mentor here, Al Bialek, you can see that he was a shill. If you believe this man was part of the Philadelphia experiment and he didn't know it his whole life until they came out with the movie and that reminded him. And if you believe he, he telling the truth after all those points I just made, you got to be a fool. Now check this out, people. If you want to research and continue to debunk Al Bialek further, you can visit the links in the description. But I really don't want to make this too much about Bialek. I had to go into Bialek briefly to show you how he relates to Phil Snyder. That's Phil Snyder's mentor who taught him how to lie and how to embellish these stories and fabricate these lectures. Again, for all of you Phil fans, don't be so quick to crucify me. I'm, I got evidence, all right? But I had to point out to you firstly that this Bialek guy taught Phil Schneider. That's his mentor, which leads back to what I was telling you. Why did Phil Schneider lie on his real daddy? Now, his real daddy named Oscar Schneider. Phil stated that his father was involved with the Philadelphia experiment. But the facts on the table show that his father was just a medical doctor in the Navy. We all know the Philadelphia experiment is shrouded in conspiracy anyway. So him trying to reinforce that with his daddy and us proving that it's questionable because we finding out his daddy was a medical doctor and his daddy didn't have nothing to do with no Philadelphia experiment. So again, why did Phil lie? Where did he get this idea from? The guy who he probably really wished was his daddy, Al Bialek. You see, Al Bialek started his whole career off of a lie that he was part of the Philadelphia experiment. And this is who school Phil. So now we see where Phil get the lie from. Let's move on. Now, people, before we move on, let's keep in mind, we have to keep honesty in our research if we want the truth. Most of us got to be honest 
when we first heard of Phil Schneider, we heard of him through him. We saw this guy pop up and we listened to his story. We was moved by it. And again, we either believed it or not, like Ripley's. We never considered another side, so please don't crucify me for simply giving you another side many of you weren't aware of, including myself. So let's continue on with this other side of the story, which seems to be a lot more factual because, again, his story is based in pseudoscience and you either believe it or not. Now, Phil also stated that his father made a deathbed confession indicating that he was a U-boat captain in Germany during World War II. Extensive research by historians has been unable to link the name Oscar Schneider to any fleet associated with the Third Reich. The Philadelphia experiment dealt with the feasibility of making U.S. Navy warships invisible to enemy radar. Documents saved by Phil's ex-wife indicate that Oscar Schneider had a cosmic security clearance. Did y'all hear that? A quote-unquote cosmic <laughs> security clearance and that he participated in the autopsy of the crew members of the USS Eldridge. During his marriage to Cynthia Dreyer, Phil claimed that the military-industrial complex had succeeded in miniaturizing some of the technology associated with the Philadelphia experiment which could make a soldier disappear. This led to a portable device that could be worn on a person's belt. Operation Crossroads was a series of nuclear weapons tests conducted at Bikini Atoll during the summer of 1946. Now let me pause for a minute and point out the fact that here is another big government program that's shrouded in conspiracy just like the space program. When you research Operation Crossroads, you will see why they needed Phil Schneider to reinforce that concept. I'm going to tell y'all something that ain't got nothing to do with this video, but it ties into Operation Crossroads. When they were supposedly testing nuclear bombs, there were no nukes. And just like they tell you that they filming the sun live and we know there's no cameras that can withstand the type heat they say. And we know that there's no internet connection that can give us this footage from 93 million miles away. You must be a fool. Same thing with these nuclear tests. When you go back and look at all that old footage, it's very questionable. It looks so fake, y'all. I mean, it's laughable. At the time, they didn't know it. Now, that's a whole nother video. Get in the description section and check out the video, Nukes Don't Exist. Please check it out before you start crucifying me. Just watch it, y'all. They telling us they got nuclear bombs and they testing them. The footage looks so fake, it just looked like some kind of old effects. It's always the explosion blowing away from the camera. So get into that, check that out, but just understand that that's important to point out because Phil Schneider reinforced that deception. This stuff make a lot of sense when you investigate both sides. Claims by Phil Schneider that the Bikini Atoll tests were a cover for a much more sinister top secret program have never been independently verified. According to Schneider, Bikini Atoll was bombed due to the existence of a massive underwater alien saucer base. Apparently, up to 500,000 saucers were destroyed in the quote-unquote tests. Photos of alleged quote-unquote UFOs departing the area at tremendous speeds at the precise time of detonation mysteriously vanished after his death. Now that's mighty convenient. It's also mighty convenient when you think about Phil Snyder's story with over 50 men going down into that cavern and only three making it out. That's very, very convenient, especially when you consider that out of those three, the only one that spoke out was him. And it's always something to look at when you only get one person with one account showing up with a story. Any of y'all that's been into consciousness thus far know that I'm not telling you a lie with what I just said. Anytime we get a story with just one person with one account showing up, it's never been good, never in history. We always got to investigate it. So 
it's very convenient when I go back now with a more mature mind and re-question my own beliefs regarding Phil Snyder. It was after the murder of Phil's friend Run Rummel and death of his father Oscar Schneider in 1993 that he became galvanized to speak out on government black projects, the alien agenda, and the devious plans of the New World Order. Again, we want to point that out. It wasn't to after these people was out of the way. So we don't have anyone else to corroborate, you know, his story. We got to keep these things in mind. And again, we know that there were many attempts on Phil Schneider's life, supposedly. But we really have to keep these things in mind when we understand that the government can fake anything. We got to always keep in mind crisis actors and how they were faking limbs missing and bullet wounds. And, you know, they can fake this stuff so good. So I don't think his hands are fake. And I'm going to show you why I say that in a minute, but I don't think it happened the way he say with the aliens and the pseudoscience with the aliens shooting out electricity like Raiden in Mortal Kombat. You know, a couple of years ago, I believed that and I, I really, you know, admire my maturity to question this type of belief. It's really sci-fi type things we see in the movies we can't prove. And again, we take one person account. When you think about the laws of nature and reality, do we really believe that there's a being walking around made of flesh and blood that's able to do such a thing? Could be, could be not. But until it's proven again, it's belief. That's all I'm saying. Now, we can't prove there were attempts on field life. We don't, again, take his word or not. So let's continue. Keep in mind the people we dealing with they are very smart. They're chess players. They know you think on a checkers type level. Some of y'all on a bingo type level, okay? They know y'all deep folks and conspiracy theorists who so quick to go make a video. I admit I was guilty. When we see something we're interested in, we think we got a good government whistleblower. You know, they always give us some guy who was part of these deep secret agent programs that no one ever knew about. And how they give these people credibility and make them believable to the people is they shroud the person in mystery by, again, telling you that it was so many attempts on his life and, you know, his hands missing and he spoke all of this stuff and opened all our eyes and then the man just disappeared and today he's dead supposedly. That right there is the crucifixion that solidifies his whole belief story. At the end of the day, his whole story is belief. You either believe the man or not. But why was thousands of people convinced of this man's story? Because they always give you a sacrifice with it. They shroud the story with a bunch of murder. Think of the people around Phil that died. Think of after Phil delivered all of his message that he had to deliver. Then he died. And I really think the government just moving these people away somewhere. And they living it up on another continent, another island we don't know about. And these people just chilling somewhere. I really believe that you know, moving around via underground systems and still living their lives in another identity or something. I really believe that. You got to always think about those astronauts they said died, but all of them still living a regular life. You got to keep this stuff in mind, y'all, and keep your mind open to the possibility and don't just take field story. Because again, it's founded on pseudoscience, it's one man belief, and that's just not a solid foundation on our quest for truth. I'm only trying to free your mind, but in order to do that, we got to detach from a lot of things we were emotionally attached to. So it's a lot of holes in Phil's story and it's a lot of conveniences in it. They give you all of this stuff in the Bible about Jesus. They tell you this man walked on water, turned water to wine. They give you all of this stuff. And how do they solidify it? How do they get millions of people to accept it? They give you the sacrifice. They give you the death. 
See, that's how they make the story real. They tell you this man said this deep message. Now, he came and he spoke a deep message and then he died. And his death is always surrounded in mystery. But we know the powers that be killed the messenger. It's always the same story. But why do the message of these people is always the same story that Hollywood give us? I'm going to show up. I'm going to give you a bunch of alien talking pseudo signs and I disappear and leave you with my speculation and my death supposedly that's surrounded in mystery. Now, what are your mind going to do? Believe it or not. Most of you going to believe it because we associate the death. The death part is what get us emotionally attached to the story. If he was still walking around now, you, you know how many people will be challenging him on YouTube? People, I just had my channel up for just two years and you got people coming out with debunk videos. Bro Sanchez, I'm debunking you. Everybody you know got a debunk video. When Phil came around, people went, the word debunk wasn't even popular. When Phil started making videos, YouTube was just becoming popular. So y'all got to pay attention to the time frame and how the elite create these tools. And they are the first ones to see their agenda out on these networks before we get hold to them. We always journey come lately with the technology. Phil was the first major conspiracy theorist even before Alex and David and all of them. He laid the foundation for people like that. So we got to go back and question these predecessors like Phil who inspired a lot of us. Now, what you got to realize is that the more we question Phil and investigate him, the more holes we find. And that again, it's the same thing. They have to get rid of these folks after the story so they ain't around to have no one challenge their story. Think about it. All the stuff I'm teaching on my channel, by me still being alive, people can say, Brother Sanchez, I don't agree with that. I'm going to come challenge you on that and I got to either accept their challenge or not. But what if I was able to tell my whole story on this channel? And just flop, go away to another island and live my life. My story will get more popular overnight after that than it ever will be if I'm alive. It's just some about somebody who tell a story and then they vanish. That story becomes popular based around the mystery of how that person vanished. It gives light to the story because it makes most of us think that, hey man, the validity of their story got something to do with their disappearance. The government know we think this way. They always give us these quote unquote whistleblowers. They tell a story. Then before we can challenge their stories and start questioning the pseudoscience, they die. That's so convenient. Ain't nobody else around to give testimony account to their story. They tell it and then they vanish before we can challenge them face to face. Y'all, please wake up and see how convenient this is. If Phil Schneider was around today, every YouTuber that's going against UFOs would be trying to debunk Phil Schneider. Brother Polite would be inviting a man on his channel for a debate. We're going to talk about your UFO story. But... It's convenient he ain't around and you got people today that's saying, I know UFO is real. Look at Phil Schneider. He died because he got to fight with a UFO. So this is how they get arguing points in the community that pass as fact, but is really belief. Just because that man, quote unquote, died and he said that he got into an alien fight and an alien shot him with a lightning bolt and shot his, his fingers off. Oh, it's so laughable now, but that's all his account. And just cause the fact he ain't here and he's quote unquote died, just like all of these other government whistleblowers. This dude Bielek, who had all the dumb stories, who taught Phil Schneider, he died too. Where all these people go, I believe they go underground to different bases, living it up on different islands after they do their job. 
They see this misinformation out here. They solidify it by vanishing, disappearing. Y'all got to understand the concept of sacrifice and how death brings the written text to life. This is the whole reason they need these messiahs to die. They need these prophets to come tell their story. Then they need them to die because the death is what turned the belief into a fact in y'all mind. But that's the magic. It's still not a fact. You say it's a fact because you you got people that actually say, man, I know aliens real. They never saw. Them. But they say, I know they real, man. And they pull up a Phil Snyder video and they say, look at this brother, man. He lost his hands and the government killed him because he was talking about it. And they don't realize these same people planted by the government and these folks ain't dead. These folks somewhere can be somewhere living it up. Now, let me state once again that I'm in no way saying that everything Phil Snyder said was a lie. A lot of the stuff that he said we can prove to be true. We know underground military bases are real. People, we didn't need Phil Snyder to come on the scene to tell us that. A lot of things Phil Schneider gave us back in the day, he was just the first to give it to us, but he was one of the most popular and first forerunners, but not the only person. Remember, when these venues like YouTube is created, before these communities can get founded, they already plant their people out there to give you the fake foundation. Like it's one from among the people, like Phil. And we always got to question these quote unquote people who used to work with the government as top, top secret James Bond agents. And now they whistleblowers for the people, baby. And you know they come with all of these stories Hollywood try to give us and they vanish. Now, when we get deep into this, you're going to see why so many questions is surrounding Phil's story. I just wanted to state that I do believe some of the stuff he said. I'm pointing out to you the agenda. They really need us to believe in aliens, y'all. They really need the belief in aliens. And I can give you so many reasons. You know, aliens make billions of dollars every year, just like space. And it's only a belief. No different than the Bible. This agenda is real deep. So again, check out my Farrakhan video on the alien invasion agenda. Now, a lot of stuff Phil spoke of when he explained these underground systems and how they got long tunnel systems underground that go for miles that's hooked up to tube shuttle systems and monorail type systems, Leviton trains. He said he said that they go like 10,000 miles per hour. I do believe some of this to a certain extent. I don't believe they got stuff that fast. I do believe they got these systems, though. And I believe this is probably a lot of how they commute beneath the Antarctic ice. Now, in my future video, I've tied so much into the land beyond Antarctica and how I think they may be traveling different ways and different lands and just a lot of stuff. But just to stay on subject, let's move on here. So one thing I want to point out is that we got to be careful when we see claims made and these claims corroborate the Hollywood deception. Anybody that's showing up and they're saying the same thing we see in these NASA animations and the same claims that the government astrophysicists talking about aliens and they making these same claims. We got to really investigate it because we should be investigating these claims instead of readily accepting them. Now, let's talk about this Dolce, New Mexico underground base where this event supposedly took place. Before we get deep into it, let me point out something before we get into the story. One of the things that helped lead me away from the globe deception is when I realized that we have no real pictures of Earth. No real pictures of Earth exist. And when you get $50 million a day from the people for a space program, that's unacceptable. You can crucify me all you want if you believe in the globe, but please agree with me that that's true. 
We all giving them $50 million a day and NASA is now requesting more money. And we don't even have a real picture of Earth yet, people, and they admitted that. Now, if we had a real picture of Earth from space, why every time the movie come on, it's a fake Earth? Man, do you know how awesome it would be every time a movie come on for us to see that beautiful picture that we spent our money on, that they risked their life to supposedly go and take Come on now, these cats said they went to space and risked their life to take this picture of Earth. We spending $50 million a day for these pictures and when the movie come on, we see fakery and the science book is drawing. When I Google for a picture of Earth, I can't see where my tax money went. It's all fakery and I'm the only one concerned. But I say that to say that anyway, you get back on field Anything they try to support without proof, we need to investigate it. Just like the globe is only supported with fake pictures, so you either believe it or you don't. And I'm through playing Ripley games. I'm putting my beliefs to the test so I can step out of the realm of the belief and get into the realm of knowing, gnosis. With that being said, this Dolce base that supposedly this event took place at, if you Google Dolce Underground Base, you won't find a picture of an actual Dolce Underground Base. You will find pictures like the ones you're seeing now. These are not pictures that's in New Mexico at some Dolce Underground Base. None of these. But we use these pictures to support this stuff just like they use the fake pictures of the Earth to support it. When you go on YouTube and everybody got a video up about the secrets of Dolce Underground Base, what you really need to question is everybody's thumbnail. Think about it. If Dolce Underground Base really existed, why the hell is everybody using thumbnails that's different from each other? And these thumbnails are drawings and just different pictures of tunnels and just dark holes. And they put Dolce Underground Base, but it's not a picture of the actual site. You ain't saw no picture of this base. None of these thumbnails that we support this stuff with is the picture of it. It's all just like the globe deception. And I'm just trying to free your mind. What you looking at now is the only pictures they got to support Dolce Base. And none of this is at Dolce. These are just random pictures of underground sites. Prove me wrong. Now, when I get into Phil's story, which we ain't even broke the surface of the deception yet when I tell you the truth, because I'm still giving you the basics. I'm just pointing out stuff to make you go, hmm. Now, the only pictures that would come close to real pictures would be the one you seeing now, but that's vague. Again, it's a top view from a supposedly satellite we know them don't exist. But again, this don't support uh, underground base. You giving me this top view. Hey, hey, it don't support it. You know, it's not showing me nothing. Here go another picture. The deep dark secret at Dolce where they got a little drawn out map. You know, we like stuff like that. That kind of make it look solid right there. You say, oh, I know it's real. Here go the map. But <laughs> I'm going to show you the actual Dolce underground base site. I'm going to show you a real, actual picture of that location. But first, let's look at the deception first. It's crazy. Think about what I'm showing you. People use all these pictures to support their YouTube thumbnail because they're giving you pseudoscience, not truth. Now, here's drawings, a diagram of what they say this Dolce Underground base, basically a little layout what it's like. And again, we love layouts. They similar to the map drawings. We can't prove them, but it just make it look more solid. You know, you got a drawn layout. Think about it. They give you drawn layouts of the globe and they put calculations and numbers around it. But it's still deception. It's still belief. So I'm just showing y'all this. We got to get out of this mindset and stop being so gullible. Now, this is a picture of one of those underground drills. We know these are very common. So they using this to support Dolce Underground Base. 
but this can be a random drill site anywhere. These things are so common, it's pitiful. So again, we don't have no proof of this Doce site. None of the YouTube thumbnails match each other. It's like everyone pick a, a little creepy little hole, a little tunnel, and they put Doce Underground Base in the title. But you're not looking at the underground base. It's entertaining. It, it's imaginative. It's, it's speculation. And now I'm bringing you truth. So what you're looking at now is the actual Doce Underground Base site. Take a moment to look at it. This is the actual site of where we would should be seeing the Doce Underground Base. Now keep in mind it's underground. So we can be looking at this base and it can be right beneath our eyes. Who knows? But all I'm doing is showing you the actual site that no one used on their YouTube thumbnail. And that's something that also ought to make you go, hmm, think about what I'm telling you. The picture you're seeing now is the actual site from Dolce, New Mexico of where this base should be at. But it just doesn't appear to be a land that's disturbed. I mean, it just don't appear like that to me and to further point out more inconsistencies phil schneider came onto the youtube scene making videos and doing lectures no he didn't have a youtube channel uploading videos on youtube he shot videos he had camera people recording his lectures and you know he was so big he didn't need a YouTube He didn't have to publish his own content. He had plenty of people buying his videos and going out publishing it for him. That's when you get big. But anyway, what I want to point out, none of these people, when they was uploading his lectures, not even his group of people, used this picture that I'm showing you for their thumbnail. Think about it. This the actual site. Why wouldn't nobody use this for a thumbnail? Because it just don't quite give them what they're looking for you to believe. When they want you to think Dolce Underground Base, they want you to think creepy tunnels with UFOs. Look at this picture right here. This is supposed to be an actual picture now of the Dolce Underground Tunnel at Dolce. And supposedly they just caught a UFO on this picture right here. Now, I don't know who had the camera and decided to take it out at that moment and just say, I'm going to take a picture real quick. But come on now, people. You really believe this is real? Look at the UFO legs. They kind of vanishing into the floor. It just don't look real to me. It's still either you believe it or don't, just like Ripley's. And like I said, I'm tired of playing Ripley games. I'm putting beliefs to the test. I'm rejecting it as pseudoscience. I'm questioning the fact that why these people never showed us this real picture of Dolce Underground Base. It's so beautiful and green. Why we never saw this picture from Phil Schneider or none of the people who uploaded these videos. It's always these tunnels on the ground that's nowhere near New Mexico. What I'm showing you is the picture of New Mexico that nobody used. But I think I proved my point with that. What we'll do now is quickly read what supposedly happened at this underground site. Just so you can either believe it or not. Like Ripley. So during August of 1979, Phil Schneider was commissioned to take part in a deep drilling operation at Dolce, New Mexico. During the sinking of the initial four shafts, it became clear that many of the lasers and mechanical components of the tunnel boring machine were coming up broken. Mr. Schneider and a number of other geologists were elected to travel down a shaft via a basket to determine what the problem was. Upon arriving at the bottom of the shaft, which was two and a half miles deep, a horrible discovery was made. It became immediately apparent that they had broken into a large cavern that was infested with aliens. The creatures were described as a type one seven foot tall, quote unquote, gray. Mr. Schneider was able to kill two of the creatures 
but was hit by a light green cobalt radiation beam that was fired by one of the aliens. I want to just add that these accounts vary in different videos, people. But in moving on, badly injured and burned, but still alive, Phil was placed in the elevator basket and began a long trip to the surface while an intense firefight continued to rage in the cavern below. Now, let me also point in that that's very convenient. The cavern was destroyed. You know, that's another conveniency in the story because now we can't go back and reinvestigate this cavern because it's destroyed. You know, we can't prove Jesus lived or died because we have no body. He disappeared. There's always some conveniency there to where you can't get nothing out of your investigation but a dead end. Therefore, it's always stand where you either believe it or don't. That's why I just choose not to believe it. People say prove Jesus exists. Well, you can't prove the existence of someone who never existed. So the real question would be prove that he did not exist. And we can do that all day, every day. They said they can prove that Abraham Lincoln existed. It's just too many convenient parts in this story and too many holes in it. And just when you think about it, some of these beliefs way up to biblical beliefs. I mean, they just as bizarre and based in pseudoscience and sci-fi as some of the other beliefs. Like I said, the conscious community have more bizarre beliefs than the religious communities that they say they so battered in and try to crucify all the time. Everyone's still corrupted. The more you know, the more you learn, the more you find out, the more bamboozled we've been. And this matrix is deep. It's humbling. It's very humbling. A lot of people full of this pseudoscience and they so full of beliefs and they so full of ego because that's what come along with this stuff. But when you start freeing your mind, you realize it ain't about reading books and putting more and more and more beliefs and pseudoscience into your brain. It's really about doing personal observations and letting go as many beliefs as you can and making your mind light. Eliminating these foolish beliefs that don't serve you and making room for the truth which will free you. So that's what I do on these videos. Video by video, I untie them. So you can get closer to the truth and spiritual freedom, mental freedom. Now, these things serve a purpose on your subconscious. So I just want you to deal with the facts at hand. Now, in this Dolce War, in the commotion, it was said that a total of 66 Secret Service agents, along with members of the FBI and Black Berets, were struck and killed by the aliens. Phil was one of only three survivors of the event. This alleged confrontation has come to be known as the Dolce Wars. Again, this is the picture of where this supposedly happened at and it's up for speculation. It just don't look like a place where all of this took place. Some hilly terrain. And I mean, I just can't go by anything again, but the compelling story and the claims of Phil, which we will put on trial right here in just a minute. So now what we're going to do, as you can see, according to the screen here, we're going to deal with some of the enigmatic personalities behind the initial Dolce Underground base rumors. We want to find out how these rumors got started again. Because the picture you're looking at below is the Archuleta Mesa in the background. And the photo was taken by Norio Hayakawa. Shout out to Norio Hayakawa. The link to Norio Hayakawa's WordPress is in the description. I won't do the entire article. But what I'm going to point out and show you here will lead you on your own research if you want to further it. I don't need to read the whole thing to prove my point, what I wanted to prove in this video. So how did this Dolce base rumor get started? Because apparently it existed before Phil. And again, this is the site you see here on this picture. It just don't look like what Phil said. 
you can see this gentleman here, Paul Benowitz. Now, as I read, it says, when it comes to the quote unquote Dolce based topic, it is really not about the base itself since apparently and evidence wise, it does not exist, but rather about the various personalities that have initially promoted this myth. Let's examine some of the enigmatic personalities, how it all started and how ultimately deluded con artist Phil Schneider took advantage of the Dolce myth. Paul Benowitz, owner of the Thunder Scientific Corporation, contractor to Kirtland Air Force Base, located right next to the entrance of Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico, presently operated by his sons. From around 1979, Paul Benowitz began to witness some strange lights hovering over Manzano underground nuclear storage area, not too far from his residence in the Four Hills area of Albuquerque. Let me say before we move on, while at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico during Warrior Transition course, I myself can testify to seeing different lights in the sky. I now live in Nevada. When we go to the mountains, we still see little shooting stars every now and then across the sky. But apparently when we're in certain locations, what we would call a, a shooting star or just a moving light or a moving star instantly becomes a ufo and again the stuff that we that does look weird the aircraft we see is often near military bases and uh is often being escorted which proves that most of these crafts is government aircraft the rest are just moving or shooting stars so some researchers such as Greg Bishop theorized that he was looking at some tests of Project Starfire or possibly some tests of prototypes of remotely controlled aerial platforms developed by Sandia Laboratories at that time. Paul Benowitz later became convinced that those objects were somehow related to an underground base in northern New Mexico near Dolce a suggestion seemingly pushed in by Richard C. Doty of AFOSI at Kirtland Air Force Base. Now, what is AFOSI? That's the Operations for Security Investigation. And I know that personally because I myself was security forces for a while in the Air Force. And OSI is a kind of like the FBI for the Air Force. They investigate the, the military. But anyway, articles on Ben and Witt soon begin to appear in newspapers such as Albuquerque Journal and Albuquerque Tribune. So you got to keep this in mind. Think about all of this. So far, what have we read? We have read that this man who's a high official in the Air Force witnessed strange lights hovering and based on pure speculation and his own theoretical theorizing, you can see it here, I'm not making this up. He theorized this, y'all. The man already in the military, come on, you mean to tell me he's associated with the military, he don't know that they got this type aircraft and that you don't just theorize and come out and speculate. And why would the Air Force take this man's theory and print it in two of their articles in their newspapers? So it sounds like everybody was in on it, the Air Force and this nutcase agent, Paul Benowitz. So it was all seeded by the government, by the Air Force, by the military, even one of the military Air Force FBI equivalents which would be the OSI, Richard Doty. He pushed this thing. So all of this is inside work by our government, y'all, and the Air Force. Remember, part of the Air Force is aerospace. It's a lot of people in the T. The Air Force is the intelligence. When you talk military branches, you see the Air Force with the president more than any other branch. You see the, Air, the president flying the Air Force plane. The Air Force is more connected with the secrets and everything on, on these type levels. They work right next with NASA, okay, and the Vatican. You got to keep that in mind. Paul Benowitz, like most of these nutcases like Nancy Leader, 
please after this video check out the recommendations i'm giving you in this video or these previous videos i got on the alien invasion and the other one i want you to check out is planet nibiru deception the one with nazi leader and the second sun hoax we're gonna move on here all of this stuff tied into the same thing they got all of these different nutcases seeding these ufo ideas nibiru concepts all of these ideas to keep us looking up okay every time we debunk them they come with a stronger one and a deeper one shrouding them in mystery and death that's how they solidify the belief into a fact just like the biblical deception we find out that paul benowitz began to suffer from paranoia and was later institutionalized is always some mysterious happen to these people after all this that they want you to think solidify the message but really it could be just them getting rid of these people after they use them now he passed away in 2003 ain't it strange everybody disappear after they make their claims maybe all these people somewhere creating a whole nother civilization on another continent just my speculations now Paul Benowitz's sons refused to be interviewed, the main reason being that Thunder Scientific Corporation still does business with Kirtland Air Force Base. So you read on and you get more into the deception, but I don't want to spend too much time on Paul Benowitz. Let's go to here, Myrna Hansen. In 1980, she claimed to have been abducted near Cimarron, New Mexico, and claimed to have been taken to an unknown underground location. Think about what I'm telling you, people. Everybody making claims, and they're making theories and speculations and theorizing. The previous guy didn't make a claim. He simply saw some in the sky that was lights moving, could have been anything, and he theorized. Now, this lady's making a claim. We got to take her claim again, believe it or not, we back the Ripley's. She claimed, you know, she was taken to an underground location, all of that, and she was abducted. She was at the time a resident of Eagle Nest, New Mexico. Paul Benowitz interviewed her at his house together with Leo Sprinkle, who did a hypnotic regression. So all of these people joined clubs together and they strengthened the lie. So Paul Benowitz later on decided that she must have been taken into the Dolce base. This was allegedly only after Benowitz begun to suspect that there was a base in Dolce. Think about that, people. Think about it. This man only suspected that there was a base in Dolce. And after he interviewed this lady, he decided that she must have been taken into this Dolce base that he only suspected of, speculated about. I just showed you the site, there's nothing there. These people speculated this location. He interviewed this lady and suspected that she was at this speculated place that don't exist when we go to the geographic location. But anyway, later on, a Richard C. Doty, remember, this is the OSI guy from the Air Force base. He suggested to her that she might have been taken to an underground weapons storage facility in northern New Mexico. So what he did was instead of going with Benowitz speculation that she was taken to a, the base based on her interview this nutcase and i don't think these people nutcases they just paid liars and agents this dude is an osi officer he heard the story benowitz heard from the lady and his speculation was that not only she was taken to this dolce base that we can't find but that he suggested she was taken to a weapon storage facility in northern new mexico so think about this this Air Force investigator and officer, he take the story, put it on steroids and add in a weapons aspect. So now we get that other degree of spookism that give the government more godlike power. Remember, nukes don't exist. All of these sci-fi weapons that 
Bill Schneider and these other nutcases talking about, they only speculating them. We based all of our beliefs on this stuff. And the people on reading y'all now, this before Phil. You hear me? This before Phil Schneider. So we can see how he took all of these stories and when YouTube became popular, he was the one to get popular with all of these nutcases story. Remember, when these people was going around saying this, it wasn't no YouTube. This in the 70s and the 80s. Phil Schneider came on the scene in like the 90s during that area when YouTube social media was just coming on the scene and he came and reinforced the stories of these nutcases. All of these government agents. Bill Schneider went no different. These his predecessors that I'm sharing with you now. So now let's move on and we're gonna read this next nutcase who helped foundate this pseudoscience based ideology that now plagues our modern communities today and even gave birth to new concepts like Scientology which is working hand in hand with the NOI to drive all of this alien invasion home that Phil Schneider talked about, just like the government told you about. Remember, go look at my Farrakhan video. I showed you where the government promoting this thing as an alien invasion we need to be worried about. And at the same time, your religious leaders promoting our salvation coming back on motherships and men in the clouds while we looking up these people ain't gonna be saving us they're gonna be attacking us this thing go deep they've been trying to see this concept into the masses and they really working hard on it at this time all right whenever you hear alien talking all that all of this space talking flat earth it's very important at this time Flat Earth is important because what Flat Earth proven is that UFOs don't exist. That go hand in hand with Flat Earth because if you know the Earth is flat and you understand the real cosmology, you know outer space is fake. Explore the channel. But that's why all of this cosmology talk and space talk and UFO talk is so important right now today. Open your eyes, people. Now, let's look at some more of these nutcases that help foundate a lot of this alien talk and gave birth to people like Phil Schneider. You're gonna really see who Phil Schneider is as we get deep into this. I'm just tearing apart the foundation, showing you the connections and even showing you how he got started. Tom Adams, he was investigating cattle mutilations in the late 1970s. We know all of those cattle mutilations and crop circles became linked to UFOs today as ever it's used to support UFOs. I find it strange that the integrity we would use in a real court of law, we don't use when it comes to science, honest science, personal observations and personal experimentation. We subtract all of that and if it compels us, we just accept the belief because never have I seen in a real court of law where someone gonna be proven guilty with a bunch of evidence that don't point to the crime. It's just a bunch of evidence that we can speculate can be pointed to the crime. If you show up to a ketchup spill, that's not a murder scene. No matter how much we stand around and look at the ketchup, it's not a murder scene, it's not blood. Once we find out that ketchup is not blood, we can't keep calling it a murder scene. If you go and investigate a cattle mutilation, why are we even discussing UFOs? Let's discuss cattle mutilations, period. Let's not even bring up UFOs because there's hundreds of things we can bring up besides UFOs that we never seen, okay? And the same can be said when we relate anything to support UFOs. You know, like with the crop circles, they later found out that it was people making the crop circles, literal people that go out and do this. So that was debunked. And the mutilations is just a belief that can be anything going on. The mutilations we don't know can be done by the farmers themselves for insurance, can be done even by 
the farmers being paid by the government to support this crap. Who knows? Anyway, we can't just say a UFO did it. Look at that mutilation. That's not real science. So in moving on, this dude Tom Adams was investigating the cattle mutilations. He first heard about the Dolce base from reading Paul Benowitz's article in a newspaper and other sources from around 1981. Now remember all of these sources is speculation, belief, and people theorizing. I just showed you the site that everybody talking about. Now it is a, alleged that Tom Adams knew this next nutcase, Ann West, and they got her name in quotations because maybe that's not even who she is. So her true identity was not initially confirmed, although it was Tal Levesque who's claimed that she had been on Facebook with a different name, Cherry Hinkle, who claimed that her half alien cat has lived for 29 years. Let me go back and read that again. This lady you looking at claimed that her quote unquote half alien cat has lived for 29 years. These are Phil Schneider predecessors, y'all. All of Phil Schneider's stories and claims about Dolce and these aliens, man, he get all of this crap from everybody I'm reading to you now. He took all of this stuff they started in the 70s and 80s and added his own stuff to it and later i'm gonna show you how he faked all of his titles all about him being government agent and all that all, all that's fake fake documents you could go and get the uh templates of any of these documents and print your name now get the letterheads and all of that oh we're gonna get into all that in a minute this thing go deep y'all know i gotta be thorough so this is his foundation though Right now, I'm ripping apart Phil's foundation so that you see he's standing on foolishness. He's standing on this Dolce myth. Remember, Phil's story is just as bizarre as this lady Ann West who predated him with this crap, talking about Dolce aliens, and I just showed you the site. This lady time out a half alien cat, and y'all still want to believe this stuff, huh? Let's read on. Ann West Cherry Hinkle was said to have been an acquaintance of Tom Adams and claimed to have drawn the initial pictures of the cats or vats of the Dolce base in 1987, yet claimed to have never heard of Paul Benowitz before she allegedly knew Tal Levesque. So y'all see how none of this add up. She drawing pictures and making claims, talking about half alien cats. Oh my God. She claimed to have known a quote unquote Thomas Edwin Costello. Tal Levesque claims that she visited him and his wife and also Thomas Edwin Costello in Santa Fe. Levesque claims that Ann West is dangerous and is part of the quote unquote invisible government. However, Levesque's claim sure sounds like lunacy. All of these claims sound like lunacy, including Phil Schneider's. Now, what you guys can do is keep reading on and you will see more and more nutcases that predate Phil Schneider with this Dolce myth that none of them saw firsthand. They speculating based on the speculation theorizing based on a theory. And when you go to the done site that they all talking about, nobody can explain why I look like this today. Only thing they can say is, hey, it's under the ground, but we can't dig to find out. Y'all see how all of this stuff is just like the Antarctic Treaty. It's just like stuff, it, you can't prove it. Then when you go to digging and you don't find nothing, guess what they gonna say? It got destroyed. People wake up, please wake up. Go to this website by Norio Hayakawa, WordPress. Check out some more nut cases. The list go on and on and on. And y'all can see the foundation of this Phil Schneider lie and these Dolce conspiracies, these myths to uh, reinforce the alien invasion agenda. You can see where all of this stuff was started, y'all. 
in the 70s and 80s, they started seeding this stuff out there. And when the social media came, Bill Schneider took all of these bogus claims and speculations and created all of these uh, modern Dolce myths that became popular under his name before he mysteriously vanished, just like all of these other nutcases on his list. Ain't that mighty convenient? It's, it's just so many holes, and when you try to invest, investigate each one of them, it's a conveniency there where you can't really investigate to 100% validity. You just gotta believe or not believe. I hope you guys are reading the captions because these captions along with the video are very important. And the captions you currently see on the screen are just some of the claims that Snyder made and the facts that prove these claims are false. See, within research fields, claims with simple research would have proved it to be false. Now, I'm going to give you some more to go along with the captions. I'm going to read some and we'll flash some on the screen so you can pause and read or some of you quick ones, you can read while listening to the other ones that I'm reading. But anyway, in addition, Schneider claimed that the F-117A was the first aircraft to utilize a special helmet worn by the pilot which incorporated quote-unquote psychoenergetic range-finding technology. This technology, Schneider states, was copied from the Russians. Essentially, the pilot thinks in his own language, which automatically arms his weapons. This statement is false. <laughs> this is pseudoscience and as we read on, we see that the helmets worn by stealth fighter pilots are standard issue United States Air Force equipment, not some psychoenergetic range finding technology where the pilot thinks in his own language, which automatically arms his weapons. More and more pseudo signs. Like I said, a bigger the lie, the quicker we accept it. And I failed victim. I believed all of Phil's messages because they were compelling. I want you guys to go and look at his videos. Even if you saw them back in the day, go back and rewatch them now that you've seen this video with the other side of the story. And just look at him. Look at his body language and come to your own conclusion but these are some very bizarre claims now that i look back on this and we actually got the facts to prove he's lying they don't have these sci-fi helmets he talking about again the stealth fighter pilots use standard air force equipment in a few of his lectures Phil claimed that the coatings on the F-117A glow red hot after each mission and that they drip off referred to as quote-unquote aurora drops. Phil also stated that there is a quote-unquote secret periodic table of elements and that the skins of the F-117 were made from element 123 aka unbitium or ubitium. However, it is known that the structure of the F-117A is primarily built out of aluminum with a few engine slash exhaust components made from titanium. Another unsubstantiated claim made by Phil is that a material known as quote unquote mirronite is used in the construction of stealth aircraft. Phil also stated that both the F-117A and Northrop B-2 stealth bomber incorporate quote-unquote alien metals beyond element 109. A search of the known periodic table of elements yielded no such quote-unquote mirronite. Also, it is well known that carbon fiber composites were used extensively in the building of the B-2. Phil states that the jet engines which power the stealth fighter use a nuclear reactor for high altitude flight. This seems totally absurd due to the fact that the F-117 is known to use two of the shelf general electric F-404 slash F-1D2 turbofan engines. And all this information, by the way, is coming from openminds.tv. The link is in the description. 
one thing that Phil Schneider spoke of a lot in his lectures that I really want you to pay attention to, he spoke about the alien agenda. Again, check out my recent upload, Farrakhan and the Alien Invasion Agenda. This ties into Project Blue Beam and the fake alien invasion, which is really going to be military force against the citizens under the cloak of UFO attack. But it's really going to be the government exterminating citizens. This is something you really want to keep in your mind. The belief in aliens is going to be used against the people. When it's blue beam technology, if it's used here in the future, they're going to be able to project aliens to you conscious folks and Jesus to you religious folks. And they already got the technology. Again, check out my video. I go into it. Now, Phil spoke about this, but like I told you, they give you the truth with the lies. So Phil didn't tell the truth like I'm telling it, how they faking it and ain't no aliens exist. In his story, he's saying that aliens actually exist and that it's really going to be aliens invading us. And that the government building an alien army, so to speak, underground and getting them ready in the future to go to war with us. This ties into all of those beliefs about, you know, them feeding the babies to the aliens who live up under the ground. Yeah, people, these are the pseudo beliefs that Brother Sanchez got to go to sleep dealing with trying to free people from these beliefs. You got people running around in 2017 in these countries' communities teaching this kind of sci-fi pseudoscience with a straight face. They getting rich off of it, man, just like Hollywood. And I can only shake my head and keep making videos to free your mind. These people say these babies getting fed to an underground alien race. I don't deny the fact that these babies coming up missing, but I'm not going to let these people off the hook by saying that's what's happening to them. I believe either these babies getting ate by the elite, the organs getting sold on the market, turned into medicines and all of that. That sounds more feasible than we feeding the underground alien race, letting the powers that be off of the hook. They give you all of the pseudoscience to hide the true threat. Just like the Christians give you this horned devil and say he doing the wrong with Jesus doing the good. You know, they give you this character to hide the wrong, just like they give you reptilians and they give you all of this stuff to hide the fact they doing it to you. It ain't no reptilian fluoridating that water, okay? It ain't no underground gray alien flying them chemtrail planes and vaccinating your children. We got to get out of pseudoscience and quit being fools. Now this alien agenda, you can go and research it yourself and look at Phil's videos where he go into the alien agenda. Again, links to this whole thing, you can get deep into it, is in the description. Openminds.tv and you can pick this thing apart, do your own research like I'm doing. Because I can't go into all of this stuff. This is long articles that I read and I'm trying to summarize them and compile it into a nice thorough video. So again, they give us these whistleblowers and they open us up to a lot of truth. They give us a lot of truth in their messages. But the foundation, the conclusion of it all is always pseudoscience, which is a religion within itself. UFOlogy. It's all part of Scientology. You will see why David Icke, Farrakhan, Alex Jones, and all of these famous YouTube channels support aliens, planet, space, and all of the pseudoscience that plague humanity and keep us disconnected from the truth and mother nature. These programs suck us dry, and they always asking for more money every year. They increasing it. They tell you they found new planets. They just draw new CGI balls. You ever wonder why all of these space documentaries is never real footage of space, always animations? But you say, okay, and you keep on looking. And you never, you know, question it any further. 
these people show up reinforcing all of the Hollywood and government pseudoscience and spookism that they use to keep us in the matrix. And these people come up missing and that's what substantiate their beliefs. That's what make their beliefs turn into facts in a lot of our minds. If everything Phil Schneider said was true and the whole story about him was true, then I take all of my words back. But I stand on my words today because I have all of the evidence and facts and Phil Schneider's story make no sense. And just the fact that he was Jewish and he was on the forefront scene of the cutting edge media that we use so conveniently today. Let me believe that he was planted there like most Jewish agents. No, it's just too much against his pseudo-scientific claims. I can't argue with his own brother and sister. When I look at all the evidence here, it's just uh, overwhelmingly argues on the other side. And we can see why that side was suppressed on this Jewish media system. If you want to prove me wrong, just do an experiment. Go to YouTube and put in the name Phil Schneider. Watch how many videos come up that support his pseudoscience. Watch how many thousands of videos you got to go through to find a video like the one you listening to now. Because we don't do research to look at the other side. And this man own brother and sister spoke out and is on the internet. But we don't see a lot of videos on this like I'm doing. That's get, at least giving you the other argument so you can make your own conclusion. Because what happens, like I said, a lot of these people make their channels famous off the pseudoscience. They use Phil Schneider to support their bogus claims. Just like I just showed you. This been going on since the 70s. Everybody got bogus claims. And they use other people's bogus claims to support their bogus claims. They use other people's speculations to support their speculation. All the way to when you look up at it today, all of these speculations have became religions that have even uh, became dominated in Islam, Scientology, you know, David Icke, Alice Jones, you name it. This is the matrix. This is a reality you believe in, but it don't really exist. You never saw it. It's a reality that exists based on it. It's being supported by other people's claims, not yours. And I just showed you the foundation, the origination of these claims and speculations from all of these nutcases. If you still want to accept them, that's fine. That's up to you. But we're going to move on here. Now, when we talk about aliens and gray aliens, listen, people, I never seen one. Therefore, I don't believe in them. But I will say this, OK, if they do exist, I don't believe they come from outer space. If they did exist, they probably some kind of subhuman race that either the government created or just another race of humans from another Earth pod somewhere who live, you know, underground and migrate different underground areas and uh, different parts of the earth we're not aware of. And who knows, they could exist, but I don't believe at all they come from outer space because I know for a fact that don't exist. So who knows, you know, I'm not throwing away the UFO alien thing all together, but I have to be honest and go with the uh, disbelief because I haven't saw one. If I saw anything close to one, I will go ahead and have some form of belief in something like a UFO, but I just want to see a light in the sky and say alien and draw a green headed man. And I just saw a light in the sky. It all started from a dude in the Air Force who saw a light in the sky and speculated that it must came from Dolce. Go back and relook at this video, take notes, share the hell out of this just to kind of summarize the whole Phil Schneider thing, him and his ex-wife is full of crap. And in a nutshell, Phil was known for giving a brief tour before his admittedly strange death about a legendary battle he was supposedly caught up in while working for the USG. 
to himself, his ex-wife, and his supporters. He is a structural engineer who blew the whistle on the Dolce Wars, quote-unquote. He began the tour with rather interesting scars, claiming they were from alien weapons, quote-unquote. One injury includes a rather large nine-inch scar down his torso, where he claims the aliens, quote-unquote, splayed him open and he is missing most of his two fingers and his thumb on one hand in an odd circular shape claiming it was instantly burned off by an alien beam or a laser type weapon. One thing that stuck me about his claim is he didn't seem to be the average crazy person. Phil in his lectures appeared genuine in his concerns, his fears, and sorrow for the quote-unquote lives lost during the fabled battle. But I ultimately came to the conclusion that he was not telling the truth based on all of the evidence. Now, he was a very good actor when it came to displaying emotion. And like I said, go back and look at his videos and you can see what I'm saying. So there are other sources who looked into Phil's medical records for his injuries. And it also exposed that that was a lie. Now, when Phil Schneider died, one must admit that there are odd circumstances around his death, to say the least. His ex-wife was convinced he had been murdered and was determined to prove it if anyone would listen. What she actually did was prove that her ex-husband was nothing but a liar. A key point here is that when they further examined the body, they noticed medical tubing tied around his neck. At one part in the report, it says it was wrapped around twice, once and three times. This very much upsets his wife who keeps pointing out the discrepancy, but then finally makes the claim that Phil Schneider could not have possibly tied the tubing around his neck. Why? Well, because according to her, he lost 80% of the use of one of his hands due to a saw injury. Did you hear what I just said? This is the summary here from Avoid the Gray Dot blog spot. And what we see is that the ex-wife said to the autopsy people, Phil Schneider couldn't have tied himself up and committed suicide because he lost 80% of his hand due to a saw injury. Either she didn't know her husband was lying about his hand injury coming from an alien attack or either she just slipped up that day. She told him it was from a saw injury. And that would make sense because his brother and sister said he was a self-mutilator. So either Phil Schneider had an injury with this saw like his wife said, or he was a self-mutilator getting SSI for this medical, this mental illness. One thing is for sure, an alien didn't shoot out no electrical beam and shoot the man hand off. That's pseudoscience and sci-fi. And we really accepted this stuff, man. We believed it wholeheartedly. That's why I'm making this video. The man, ex-wife said to the people he lost the hands in assault injury, the brother, sister said he was a self-mutilator. You put the pieces together. Or either you can believe an alien underground shot it off with a mysterious blue beam that sometime he said was a green bean and that he was the only three survivors out of over 50 people and out of those three he was the only one to be the whistleblower. Look at this crap. All of these inconsistencies and conveniencies and holes in this thing and everybody contradicting themselves. None of it stand up in the court of law. I'm banging the hammer. We're going to get a little bit deeper into who Phil Schneider really was. And this is from the same source, Norio Hayakawa, which again, knew Phil Schneider's family. And again, we always want to hear a second side of the story. Most of you got to admit, like I said in the beginning, when we knew about Phil Schneider, it was only through his account and his testimony and he vanished. This thing is shrouded in mystery and I'm giving you facts that already raise speculations and red flags. So as we continue down this rabbit hole, we can get the other side of the story that's necessary 
before we can really base a conclusion. Information on Phil Schneider from a highly reliable source, a friend of mine who actually talked to Phil's brother a few years ago in total privacy. Quote, regarding Phil Schneider, I became aware of his story, I think in 93 or shortly after that time while we were living in Banner Elk, North Carolina, because someone had transcribed one of his talks and uploaded the text onto the then beginning internet. Again, during this time, guys, the internet was just becoming popular. So as we read on, it says, after reading it, I decided to do research and contacted as many people as possible that were friends and relatives of his. What I found out from his older brother, George, and sister, Polly, disturbed me. This is where we get interesting, people. This comes from out of the mouth of Phil Schneider's brother, George, and his sister, Polly. You read here for yourself, it says that, his brother and sister says that Phil was a self-mutilator and had cut his thumb off with a hacksaw in the basement of his father's house on the day of his sister's wedding. Polly told me this in the letter that she sent me after George and I talked on the phone. George was in the Air Force, served in Vietnam, and at the time we talked was a sheriff on the Portland River Boat Patrol. They both told me that Phil did none of the things that he claimed was not a geologist, had never worked for any of those companies, and could not keep a job very long because of his mental instability. All of his predecessors, right? They all got something in common. Just like Nancy Leader, I just left the nutcase page, okay? These people who made Phil, these was his predecessors. What they all got in common, most of them seem to be linked to mental instabilities. So as we read on, it says there are untold number of people in the U.S. receiving SSI because of mental problems. They are unable to get regular jobs. It is an indeed a sad thing, but it should be understandable. So what you're looking at now is a picture of Bill Schneider's actual supplemental security income notice of decision. This don't prove anything other than that the man received SSI. Okay, and it supports what his brother and sister said regarding the mental instability. He had some form of mental instability that he failed to tell us during his lectures. And if we go by his brothers and sisters, he was a self-mutilator, which would support the missing fingers. And when I look at this SSI paper in front of me with Phil Schneider's name and everything, even his social security number visible on it, you can pull this stuff up as public documents, apparently. It leaked out. You know, I can only go by facts and evidence. Yeah, this can be forged, but I really can lean more on believing this account given by his brother and sister who really I don't think have a big reason to lie on him. And I don't think if your brother died and he was patriotic and lost his life the way he say, which would have been so honorable, I don't think that his brother and sister would come out and taint his legacy and say anything about that and be so sure even when they speak on it. You know, you wouldn't want to destroy your love when they already dead and you go take their legacy and making them into a liar unless you really damn sure about it, you know. So I don't really want to call his brother and sister a liar because their story come with some more feasible evidence as opposed to Phil's pseudoscience and the alien shot his finger off with a lightning bolt. You know, I rather believe the self-mutilation thing here that's supported by this SSI mental instability document than the alien story. So people, I'm trying to free your mind. This thing go real deep. Let's keep reading on. This is an account from family, friends, and all of them. It say he married after telling all these stories and that is why his wife believed him. 
He usually started off his talks by saying that the major reason for going public was his best friend was murdered in a park and had been in the Air Force. I contacted family and friends of that best friend and they all say that he never had been in the Air Force. On and on it goes because this story was posted when the internet was just beginning in the 90s. It has taken on a life of its own and been copied and circulated over and over. Circular knowledge is not knowledge at all. It is just repeating what someone else says. And you can see that even in the 70s and 80s, this circular knowledge and these rumors about this Dolce myth that was planted by the government agents in nutcases, you can see that it all based on repeating on what somebody else said. The first person saw something in the sky and had a theory that this was some crap from Dolce base. The next lady told her alien story and he, the first dude with his theory used her story and her belief to support his theory. Nobody got no facts now. He interviewed her, took her story to support his story. Everybody supporting theories with theories. You see how it went on and on. Everybody had their story tied all together around this place called Dolce which when we go research it, it don't exist. So we read on here in this letter and it says, Phil's family are Jewish. Oh my God, now we understand something, people. This is the link that drive it home. All of the media deception that they plant on these media outlets is coming from them Zionist Jews. Phil Schneider's family was Jewish, y'all. Now it makes sense. When the internet first got started, when they started these media platforms, people, the Jews control all media. That goes for internet too. When the internet first began in the 90s, the Jews started these media outlets on the internet. These big venues like YouTube and the rest of them. And they put their puppets on them before people like us even came on the scene. Now here I am in 2017 just uncovering a lie that was seated and had all us blind in the 90s. And it's this circular knowledge even started in the 70s with these nutcases. This is Jewish propaganda at its finest. They was putting it in the media then. I told you all the nutcases surrounding it then was government agents. People connected, more than likely Jews. They run the media, the same Jews that give you the NASA images and the space movies and the sci-fi to support the lies. Phil's family were Jewish. That explains why he was the first big internet presence in the field of the internet that's dealing with consciousness, uh, space, alternative sciences which is very popular, even more popular than the regular sciences, the mainstream sciences. Today they merge in hand in hand and the realm of alternative science is shrouded with shams, agents that ain't there to go against the mainstream science, but to reinforce mainstream science beliefs under the guise of whistleblowers and debunkers and skeptics and myth busters all of these shams and agents, they ain't busting no myths or challenging no science. At the end of the day, they still go support their daddy, big brother. At the end of the day, Phil was supposed to be such a big whistleblower. We finding all of these lies. We finding out he was just another Jewish liar who was planted to see a lot of these misinformation seeds and, uh, pseudoscience concepts in our conscious communities when they first were conceived in the early 90s when the internet first took off. What we doing ain't nothing new. What a lot of your black teachers today, I won't call their name, the young pseudoscience is out here talking about all the aliens and stuff. What they ain't telling you, what they don't know about what I'm telling you here in this video, where they get all of their pseudoscience from. All of these nutcases, none of them never saw no aliens. 
And if they on that channel telling you that they made contact with some ETs or aliens, you better get off of it because they using the same deception that all of these nutcases was using back in the day. That See, listen, y'all, a lot of YouTubers, they channels got famous when they was making alien stories and Phil Schneider talks. They didn't go and look at the alternative story. They took Phil Schneider's story and they went and reduplicated. Some of them got famous off just resharing his events and reteaching his uh, lectures and resharing his videos. And a lot of them bit Phil's platform and foundation and concepts and made their own stories just like all of them other nutcases. But a lot of these YouTubers did this stuff and they took off you know, the internet been around a while now. A lot of these people, millions of subscribers, they been around. They were soaking up these lies when they came on the scene and they never questioned them like I'm doing today. That's what the flat earth truth done to me. It made me look at the other side of the story because for example, all I was given the globe, all I was given the Bible, never questioned them. The moment I questioned them, found out they were lies. So just like aliens, never saw saw none of these things. No men walking on water, no globes floating in space, and no aliens. So when I question them all and look at the other side of the story, some most of us don't do. You see what we uncover here. So Phil Schneider was Jewish and was planted on that media scene, this internet scene with this conscious community to keep us in disarray and chaos like we are today. We still debate on whether UFOs exist or not. So if you're looking at this video and you saw the recent debate with Brother Polite with the extraterrestrials and the UFOs, share this video with him. Spam this link on this channel. Share it with everybody you know. This is important, y'all. Phil Schneider touched a lot of people. Now I'm showing y'all he was a Jewish liar who is more than likely still alive. He served the agenda. Again, y'all, I can't give y'all all of this stuff because this what I'm reading from now is a long article. This person going into Phil Schneider whole life. Now, I done read you enough right now to debunk the man and make you completely abandon all of this nonsense. Showed you all the nutcases who predated him, who he learned it from. These type agents come along all the time. And when you get into this story, it'll make your jaws drop. I'm going to read a little bit more and then y'all going to have to get in the description and continue it on by yourself. Phil's family are Jewish and came from Russia. And what really hurt and perplexed the family members in Oregon was Phil telling the world that his father served as an officer on one of the German U-boats during World War II. In reality, his father, along with his uncle, were born and raised in Oregon, went to college and became medical doctors, served in the USN, and his father worked with folks in developing the first nuclear sub, the Nautilus. Nothing about no nuclear bombs in the Crossroads Project, all of that crap, okay? This is how you start exaggerating stories to make it fit your bogus claims. We read on and it says, when Phil's father died, Otto Oscar Schneider, Phil stole navy blank letterhead paper from his dad and created letters using that stock and circulated and showed it to people at his conferences. Let me repeat that. When Phil's father died, Otto Schneider, Phil stole navy blank letterhead paper from his dad and created letters using that stock and circulated and showed it to people at his conferences. This guy is an imposter. Phil and his friend who he says was in the Air Force created a newsletter and were doing research like all of us about UFOs and etc. So why he went off the deep end and started telling all these stories is a mystery. Now this coming from first hand people. This coming from his brother, sister and from a friend of Phil. And this is on NorioHayakawaWordPress.com. So like I said, it's just too much for me to try to read all of this stuff and make a 10 hour video. You pretty much get the point and see how deep the deception goes. 
Phil Schneider, you know, eventually was found dead and it was ruled a suicide. But here it says, I also had a chance to look at the coroner's death autopsy report, which was obtained by the late Gabe Valdez, New Mexico State Patrol officer in charge of the entire Dolce region for many years. Gabe Valdez had also come to the same conclusion and agreed with the coroner's report that the death was ruled a suicide. All of this is the coroner's report. You know, all of the death and all of that is speculative. You could, that's a whole nother video and an area of research or dynamic to this that I think need to be separate. The whole death mystery surrounded it. If you really want to be thorough with it, that's really not necessary for me to get into for me to prove my points and serve the purpose of the video here. Now, this dude, Greg Valdez, made a book, all right? And like I said, everybody capitalized off the books, the lectures, the media, all of this surrounding all of this nutcase speculation. It says from Greg Valdez's excellent book, Dolce Base. Greg Valdez is the middle son of the late Gabe Valdez, New Mexico State Patrol officer in charge of the Dolce area for many years. And quote, Cynthia Dreyer was the person who actually came up with the murder theory. So the coroner reported suicide again. I'm not going to go with any, tell you which way I'm leaning toward, but I will say this. Cynthia Dreyer, his wife, remember when he met her, he was already lying to her. Like I told you previously, he deceived her. They was going through financial issues. The man was getting SSI deceiving her. See, she already knew that her husband probably wasn't credible, but she was just, a. if you ask me, another person being supported, you know, at home, she wasn't working. She was depending on Phil Schneider's lectures she was dependent on his pseudoscience. I mean, keep it real, y'all. This was his wife. Whether it was real or not, she ain't gonna come and say her husband was a liar. But the brother and sister did. They ain't got no reason to lie. She do. Because think about it, if it's a suicide, I don't think you can get insurance. She was the one came up with the murder theory and she had all of the reasons too. She had the motives too, but it's just a theory. I don't believe everything the coroner say too. So as we read on, we find out that Cynthia came up with the murder theory and that she didn't get this idea from actual evidence, but from her mother. It's always he say, she say, one person gave me a theory and from their theory, I came with a theory and from their speculation, I made a speculation. This lady got this murder theory idea, not from actual evidence, but from her mother who had a psychic vision and concluded that Phil was murdered based off her psychic vision. Cynthia also claimed that her dad, Frank Martin, was killed in Albuquerque, 1952 as part of another conspiracy involving the government. Her inconsistent story also claimed that Phil's hands were tied when he was found dead and then later claimed they were by his side. Her story has many inconsistencies making Phil's involvement in Dolce extremely unlikely and not credible. Cynthia Dreyer quickly started requesting money in her correspondence with Gabe Valdez because she claimed Phil did not have life insurance. These people probably faking Phil death. They serve their lead agenda seeing the lie out there because they are Jews, they are deceivers, and Phil somewhere living good, collecting all of his murder money, still alive with his family. That's just one belief. Because since his death, that man received so much money from the people, they don't need the life insurance. There's so many sites and stuff set up out there, people believe in this alien life, but they ain't researched this, this deep. If only the truth got supported like the lie did. If only people got behind the truth like the lie. You know why people don't get behind the truth like the lie? Because the lie feel good. The lie interesting. The lie is pseudoscience. But guess what? 
the truth hurt. You notice that the lie get the most support. The churches, all of these books and pseudoscience and all of that. But when I come along and tell you the truth that'll set you free, Cynthia Dreyer clearly has a motive that she won't do uphold the pseudoscience of her husband. She claimed Phil didn't have life insurance and whether he did or didn't have it, like I said, it don't matter. She quickly went to the people asking for money, just like they do today with these GoFundMes. She quickly went to the people and the people made sure she was straight because Phil had a huge following in them pseudoscience communities. So either way it goes, she benefited off of this lie and it'll all vanish if the truth come out. So she don't want the truth to come out. Again, y'all, I encourage you to continue this way up site here because it's just so much, but we're going to move on. This is the emotional letter that uh, Cynthia Dreyer, the wife of Philip Schneider. All of this crap is fake if you ask me. I think this man's still alive. I think that lady is a scam artist just like her Jewish husband, just like all of them. None of this stuff makes sense. Too many holes in it, too many inconsistencies and conveniences. Now this is her little sob story that she put out there during this time. This been up here for a long time. This the letter that made this woman thousands, if not a couple of millions of dollars based on this fake story and this fake martyr, Phil Schneider. I really think this man is a fake martyr, okay? I think they really sucking the people dry in these communities with all of these theories and stuff, y'all. These people came around when the internet was first conceived seeding these lies out here that we just now debunking today. And they've made so much money since the early 90s to today off the donations and kids who weren't even around then going on the internet learning about Phil Schneider continuing his legacy, making money. So many communities based off the Dolce Wars and when you go there, you don't even see nothing. But just like the religions, when you show them the truth and prove that they little make-believe beliefs and imaginary crap don't exist, they want to battle you for it when you come in with facts and they got pseudoscience and beliefs. But again, y'all, if y'all want to read this sob letter, get in the description area and you can decide for yourself. Don't let me decide for you. Take the stuff I'm giving you. Take it to the next level. Make your own conclusion. As we move on, we'll just flash some more captions inconsistencies and claims that Phil made during his lectures. All of these here are a bunch of claims that Phil Schneider made. And when we go and research these claims, we find out that there are more inconsistencies. But again, as I move on, I'll just flash these up there for captions. Now to the bottom left of the screen is something I want you to deal with at some point. Pause the video and read this little black box. Now what I want you to focus your attention on is the chronology at the top. So you can see that all of this UFO talk started in the 1930s. On the night before Halloween in 1938, Orson Welles directed the Mercury Theater on the air live radio adaptation, H.G. Wells' classic novel, the War of the Worlds, by mimicking a news broadcast, the show was quite realistic sounding for its time, and some listeners were fooled into thinking that a Martian invasion was underway in the United States. So the whole conception of an alien invasion from outer space occurred in the 1930s, well before the space missions, and before they even quote-unquote had all of the knowledge they supposed to have about Mars today. All of this stuff started in science fiction. And again, it's always through the Jewish media. Really, it's the radio, big time internet sites, science and TV, 
all of the Jewish media venues. So we can see this started back in the 30s where they faked this Martian invasion on the radio. Remember, radio was popular then. They already had these ideas in their head, this New World Order alien invasion go deeper than you think. So you see here in the 30s, they was using the media to see these concepts in the mind of humanity. So even though it was a hoax, you know, a lot of people didn't get the message that it was a hoax. So it was just an idea seeded into society. It just laid the idea for the theory. You know, some people to this day who heard that broadcast still don't know it's a hoax right now. So they know what they doing, see misinformation out there. You can read on where it said there was widespread confusion followed by outrage and controversy. Some later studies have argued that the extent of the panic was exaggerated by the contemporary press, but it remains clear that many people were caught up to one degree or another in the confusion. So this was the first conception where they seeded the whole UFO concept based on a doggone radio broadcast, people. Now look, we still in the 1930s, I'm skipping around. According to US Air Force captain, what I told y'all about the Air Force, the Air Force deals with aerospace, they are connected with NASA, they part of the agenda. Now according to US Air Force captain Edward Ruppel, the Air Force files often mention the panic aftermath of 1938 War of the Worlds broadcast as a possible reaction of the public to confirmed evidence of UFOs. However, the files have not been made available to corroborate his assertions. Y'all see how this deception go? They know this junk was a lie, a hoax, but used it to corroborate his assertions. We go to the 1940s and we meet this individual, Dan Donald Kehoe. And uh, you can read on, he'll give you his story that happened at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Remember, this stuff is always around Air Force Base. Kehoe began investigating flying saucers for True Magazine. Kehoe was one of the first significant conspiracy theorists asserting eventually that the saucers were from outer space and were on some sort of scouting mission. Now this was in the 40s, so magazine was a big form of media, people. Understand this Jewish media propaganda been going on in so many forms for so many years. You see that this dude, Donald Kehoe, is another big liar. You can read it for yourself. To date, no substantiating evidence for NICAP's assertions has been presented beyond accounts that are anecdotal and documented hearsay or rumor. Now, people, all of these people ain't no different than the nutcases I just read to you previously who laid the foundation for nutcases like Phil Schneider. These people deceived all of us and set the original seeds for this pseudoscience that plague our communities. We still arguing about some of this stuff today. We can't prove it, but we can prove it wrong. We can prove it's, it, it ain't a fact. It's another religion, a cult. So you read on with 1940s with Donald Kehoe, and uh, basically, you know, you go through the years in chronology, you can do it yourself. You go through the 1950s, where all of this stuff originally, now we go to the, the root of the tree. You cut the, the roots, the whole tree die. 1930s, radio broadcast hoax. It's the foundation of all of the rest of these lies. If it's built on a lie, how can it stand? The foundation of it is a lie. All during the 40s, we got all of this military government propaganda, Roswell incidents, and all this recur occurred in the 40s. Remember I told y'all that all of this UFO technology ain't nothing but military aircraft. They, they get 50 million a day to build these goofy looking saucers. They got us thinking it's UFOs, but it's really goofy looking equipment that they use just to keep the idea going. People, they spending a few million on one of these goofy looking saucers 
and they're making multi-billion dollars off the UFO propaganda every year. It's a whole industry that's supported off them making a few saucers telling you it's UFOs. And they got you so dumbed down, most of the sightings we see them being escorted with military planes and we still hold to the idea that the government working with aliens. No, it ain't no aliens. The government using that aircraft to see this spookism out here. It's another form of blue beam, but instead of them putting an image out there in the clouds, they just doing a military escort with some of the equipment. They got you looking up being deceived. It's your interpretation that does it all. They see the ideas out there and create the images. So lazy with it, they got the military scoring these things and we still don't say, hey, maybe it's a military craft. When all of these things are around Air Force Base, y'all still don't get it. So all in the 40s, all of these joints was going on. Then we lead up to the 50s. And again, I debunked the first lie that the first lie was a hoax on a radio. We see everything else is a lie built on a lie. So ain't no need of me reading all of this, what happened in the 50s. Get it in the description, go and finish it yourself. It's just a simple chronology. We move on to the 1960s. Throughout much of the 60s, atmospheric physicist James E. McDonald suggested via lectures, articles, and letters that the U.S. government was mishandling evidence which would support the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Now, this was in the 1960s. They were seeing this type of propaganda. They got the shrouded in mystery. They got the surrounded like, hey, we hiding it from you to make the people say, hmm, they got to make you want your own deception, people. Understand what I'm telling you. When they want you to accept some of their lies, they don't just give it to you. That look obvious when the liar come and hand you the lie. The liar got to make it look like he holding something you want. For example, I may want to hold a conversation with you about something, but I don't know if you want to talk or not. But I walk up to you and say, guess what? And you'd be like, what? And I'd be like, man, something real deep happened. And I just stopped. Now you gonna ask me for the conversation, whereas I know that I wanted to have the conversation, but I knew you probably wasn't gonna want it. So I introduced the conversation to you in a way that'll make you want it. I shrouded it in mystery. So I said, man, guess what? And you said, what, man, something deep happened today. At that point, I ain't gotta say nothing else. Cause naturally, guess what you gonna say? What happened, man? And now I'm making you want the conversation. You see, so what they do is they make you want the lie. They put the lie out there like they hiding the truth. And then they make you go and find that and it's really the lie all along. Again, they put the lie out there like they hiding the truth. How you always know is the lie is you can't prove it. At the end of it, it's going to always be belief. We see in the 70s this thing continued on, even uh, conspiracy surrounding Holloman Air Force Base. And now we make our way on up to our buddy Paul Benowitz, who we discussed earlier. Earlier, I gave y'all the chronology of Phil Schneider's predecessors and who he learned it from. And one of the people on that list was Paul Benowitz. So rewind a video pick up at Paul Benowitz in the previous part, and you can see where the 70s start all the way on up to date. We got modern pseudoscientists in these uh, conscious communities. You know, I ain't gonna call their name, but uh, young pseudoscience and uh, you know, these new people keeping the lie going, whether they know it or not. I don't know if these people are agents or not. But you know, the government got their own groups out there, just like the Flat Earth Society is a PSYOP group that's used to taint the real Flat Earth truth. Because when you go to the Flat Earth Society, they give you a bunch of nonsense that make real Flat Earthers look bad. 
They really believe in a floating disc in outer space and all the dumb talk. So if people go there first, they're going to be turned off. The government got their own UFO groups. MUFON is one of them. When you do your research, you'll start seeing that MUFON pop up. And again, these are planted groups by the government. So this chronology tells it all and it brings it all the way up to, to today. Again, I stopped you at the seven is going into the eighties with Benowitz because we already picked up there in the previous part. But all the way up to the day, you see these lies still in the community. Polite just had a debate. Shout out to Polite. I don't agree with everything Polite say, but he was up against a fella that got a cult-like following. And that cult-like following is the same thing that these people had who I'm telling you now. So it's just sad we don't even know the origin of these ideas we readily accept without hearing the other side or doing extensive research. So I know y'all can't see me, but as we close out, we just need to deal with this. Now, one thing Phil Schneider spoke about was the Denver airport conspiracy. Basically how that whole theory came about. In 1994, Alex Christopher and Phil Schneider gained access to the underground facilities beneath the Denver airport before it officially opened. So think about it. We talking about a mental ill guy, Phil Schneider. He's very imaginative. He's very intelligent, eloquent with words but mentally ill in a place where he create these type of stories and actually convince himself to believe them or actually mentally ill, just the fact that he is a compulsive liar and that is kind of illness within itself. I mean, I'm starting to look at this guy real differently now. You can go back and check out his videos with this understanding, but basically the whole idea of the Denver airport conspiracy got seated by him and his buddy, gained access to this airport before it opened, and they speculated, had all of these ideas. Um, now, I will say this, I do believe a little bit of the Denver airport conspiracy, and I, I was honest here, I said I believe, I didn't say I know, this is just another one of my beliefs. I don't think Phil lied about everything, but I'm pointing it all out thoroughly in this video. They got to give you some truths with the lie. He had an agenda and I'm exposing it all here. Now, some of the truths, I do believe in the underground cities, the underground military bases and all of that good stuff. Now, what you looking at right now is really just a underground storage facilities in Denver airport. It got conspiracy files in the bottom right corner, but if that went there, really, come on, keep it real, people. Every airport in the United States got an underground facility like this at the bottom, where some kind of storage going on, some kind of building functions going on under the ground. Now, Phil was able to get in there and take these pictures uh, when it first opened in um. What you see in the captions are the speculations he made with these pictures. And you slap DIA conspiracy files in the bottom right, there you go. A new myth is created. It's that simple. But it's just pictures of the Denver airport. Now, I do believe that it's some underground cities. I can't say that some got to do with the Denver airport just based on these pictures of their underground facilities. They allowed the man in there to take the pictures. Some whistleblower, now they gonna let them go out and do all this. Now I do believe in ancient earth races and all that that's living on other continents they hide. And I believe it's probably underground wars being fought and all of that. But that's a future video. You need to research this Denver airport thing on your own because I'm just showing you more deception. Phil Schneider got in his airport in 94 with his friend and they let him take pictures and go around. Probably saw that the man was mentally ill. You know, I got a cousin like that. He ain't mentally ill like, but he mentally ill like he collect keys and think he a janitor and uh, he helped 
over help. Anything he see, he want to help. He he got a, a, a mental illness where he'll get up in the morning and walk to the fire station and just volunteer help. What I'm saying is people with mental illnesses that ain't like, you know, they can be just like Phil and do lectures. But when you look at his lectures now, think of that mental illness. It's a form of narcissism a compulsive liar type illness that's actually an illness like i met people like this man they tell lies so long they convince themselves it's real and they really believe it but i believe these type people like phil are agents again i'm gonna leave the link to this denver airport thing in the description section this particular website, I don't know if it supports Phil claim or it don't support it. I'm just leaving the information there for you to look over and base your own conclusion. As I told you previously, Phil Schneider's teacher was this dude, Bielek, who he forged some of his lies into his real daddy's story, as I mentioned previously. But one thing I want to point out, this dude, Bill, that claimed that he time traveled to the future. And uh, he got a lot of other bogus claims that make him just incredible. Yes, the word incredible is not good. I mean, it's not credible. Been a long video, people. I gotta let you go. No need for a long outro. It's been long. Please share the hell out of this video. This is important. Plenty of your friends still believe in aliens and Phil Schneider's story. They're supported with his story. Now, a lot of people, even flat earthers, believe in aliens and they're still holding on to the belief because of Phil Schneider. But now that you know that his story is debunked and he's an agent, his leaders closest to the truth, it give us one more reason to question everything. So as I get out of here, I don't want to hold y'all any much longer. Shout out to my family of patrons. Remember new uploads every Thursday. Peace and much love.